All right, we're back the next day. Now we went ahead and put our flames on there. We got VW John over here. Come on over here. You were asking a question about something on the tank. We just got done painting this flames last night. What's up? Okay, so you fog you fog one color on top of the other color starting at each end? Well, yeah, this is one color only. This is down here too? This is all one color. All it is is pearl and reducer mixed together. Oh, it looked lighter over here. Well, that's because I made it thicker. He wanted the tips and then the round corners a little brighter and they wanted to smoke in. Okay. Okay, so when we take it out in the light, all right? Then it'll look fine. Yeah, you want to carry that out there and we'll show her. Well, why don't we go ahead and do this? Why don't I tape it first? Then we'll take it out there because you can't really tell. All right. See how this looks black right here? Right. It's not black, it's red. It's really a cherry color. See, look at the fender down there. Right. Okay, so let me get back to the uh, thing. All your questions will be answered, bud. Okay, so uh, we went through the procedure on how to tape the flames off. And also, mixing the pearl. Pearl mixing is very easy. Just mix it with the reducer. And then I found that using a uh, full-size spray gun and closing the tip down to a point instead of a fan, um, you can stand back and make all that. you got to go real fast. So practice makes perfect. If you mess your first one up, you know, the second one's going to look better. Let's go ahead and untape this. We're going to look at it and see what it looks like with our first set of flames on it. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Now, once again, I want to tell everybody, I did use the DBC Intercoat Clear on this. That's very important. Make sure you use that because if you don't, um, having the tape on your tank overnight will peel the paint off of your bike or car or whatever you're working on. And one more thing, uh, if you're watching this video, I'm just telling you, of course you're watching this video. Why wouldn't you be watching it if you're looking at it? Um, I want to go ahead and mention that this tape that I'm using is actually the wrong tape to use. Um, you can use this tape, but the deal is, is they have, there's actually another tape out there. It's a blue tape. It's blue and it's called fine line tape. Um, that would actually be a better tape for you, the viewer, to use due to the fact that this is real thin tape. And when you're taking your X-Acto knife and um, cutting out the tape and this, that, and the other around the edges, you might go through the tape. So if you can get the blue outline tape, I suggest that you get that and not to use this uh, tape that I'm using, which is actually made by 3M, and uh, really kind of sucks. Now, there is people out there that will paint their bike matte black and then put the flames on and it'd be shiny black, but we're not doing that. Now, I want to uh, show you what happens when you uh, tape that off. Let me get the camera over here, and we're going to show you what the situation is. So if you look at the tank right there, you can see that uh, the paper has left a residue on to the tank. Don't worry if that happens. It's okay. Even if you use tape on it, it's still going to leave a residue. Uh, and we have to sand that anyway. If John can feel that, feel that right there. You can feel the... No, right here. Can you feel the tape line on that? Okay. What we're going to do with that is we're going to take a piece of 1500. We'll go ahead and sand the flames down and also get rid of all of our residue and our imperfections. And that's why you have to use the inner coat clear that I mentioned earlier in this video set because if you don't use it, you will ruin your paint job. It's very important to use the DBC 500 as you're going on painting your flame jobs. And then if we look around the tank here, uh, you can get a gander at the flames themselves and you can see what kind of flame action is going on. Um, these are actually ghost flames. Uh, you can see how it looks a little bit black here. The owner requested that he wants the uh, curves and the tips to be dark, uh, brighter and then he wants them to fade in, so that's exactly what we did and it really came out nice. And then one more thing I want to show you is if you look down the center here, remember we cut it in half and I mimicked it to look the same. So I got really, really close 
and you can see that just by looking at it. You can see how close we got in the middle. Uh, these two uh, curves are almost exactly the same. This tip here are almost the same. It's a little shorter here, but when you look at the top of the tank, you really want that to kind of look uniform. As far as the sides go, it really doesn't matter because you can only see one side of the tank at a time anyway. So the next thing that we want to do, we want to go ahead and get a piece of 1500 wet dry. I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to go ahead and just sand this down. And by sanding this down, it's going to remove the residue and also take the paint lines off of our ghost flames. Now when you're sanding this, do not use anything, uh, anything coarser than 1500. 1500 is the coarsest you want to go uh, because you don't want to burn through your um, flame job. And this would be a good time if you got any uh, overspray, like you missed a spot that uh, you didn't tape off and you got some pearl on, this would be the time to take your 1500 and then using your thumb, you would go ahead and get that out of there nice and easy, uh, feathering it away. It's real important to make sure that you sand and sand it good, getting all that residue off and all that imperfectional uh, design that the tape and the paper left behind. Once you put your flame job on, John was just asking an important question. Um, once I sand this, should I go ahead and use a wax and grease remover or rubbing alcohol to clean that off? No. Okay, don't use anything. Keep your hands clean. If your hands aren't clean, use rubber gloves. All we're using is water. That's it. We don't want to use any more chemicals on it. We're just using water, a sponge, and a clean white ball to keep everything clean before we add our other flame job. And then once it's dried off, we're going to let it sit for approximately 20, 30 minutes before we go ahead and put our other flames on top of our first flame job. Alright, so what we're going to do, since the uh, gas tank is a small surface and we really can't see uh, the flame job that we're laying on top, we're going to go ahead and use this fender because the fender is very big and large. And this is dry. The reason you want to dry it because you might have missed some of the residue, and I see some right here. So I'm just going to spot sand this to get that off. Once again, it's important to get that residue off of the tank or bike or car or whatever you're working on because if you don't, it will or might show up when you clear coat it. It usually doesn't and it's nothing to fret over, but sometimes it might show up and that's what we don't want. Alright, so now that we got our uh, fender done, we're going to go ahead and swap from the tank to the fender because we're doing the same thing. I want to go ahead and put one more set of flames on this. Now there's two ways that we can do that. We can go ahead and tape the flames off and let the blue pearl land on top of the red pearl and it would look like they're intertwining. And then there's another way we could do it where we put our flame on and then wherever the red is we tape that off. Remember I was telling you about your first flame is going to be your bottom flame? All right, you understand what I'm saying? So we, we got uh, uh, two choices here. We can go ahead and tape them off and have the uh, blue pearl riding on top of it or tape them off and then tape it off when we pull it off. So let's get our flames on there. Let's see what we got, see what it looks like, and then go from there. take it outside let's see what the red pearl looks like and then you're gonna get a gander at what it looks like okay can you get see that in the camera John can you see that I don't like this flame job and I'm gonna tell you why um, even though the seat comes up to here we're really taking away a lot of the red by covering all this up does that make sense so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line, I'm going to bring it around, alright, I'm going to kind of bring it around like this and then down, 
Um, what that's going to do, you're going to be able to see the red over here coming out of the seat. So as you can see, uh, lining up your flames and doing a proper flame job is a hard job, especially with our pearl. Um, I think they're going to look alright, but the problem that I have with it is uh, you can see this flame here, but then on the other hand, all this is going to be blue inside here, which is going to cover all this red. Does that make sense? So in that particular situation, what I would do is I would take these flames off and on that particular situation, I would go ahead and lay the blue on top like it was two ghost layers on top of each other. What do you think of that idea? Can you, can you take and just fog it back in here? So well, that's what we're going to do, but see, when I highlight this area up here, it's going to fog up into that red, right. okay, and change that into a purple color. Um, it's a situation that says, what should I do? You understand? Um, I'm thinking of maybe pulling all the tape off and starting over. Um, I don't know if I really like it, and I think that's what we ought to do. It's a creative process. I think we're going to go ahead and pull the tape off, start over, gives our design where we can actually see some better flame action. I don't know. Um, all I'm looking at right now is the red. Okay, because everything that you see in this tape is going to be blue. Yeah, there's not much right? red showing. And there's really not much red showing. Now, we do got this flame here right next to the blue flame. All right, but uh, it's really not looking like I was thinking it was going to look. Do you think it's because you're running parallel to the red instead of crossing the red? Now, if you brought this thing in and brought this in over like this, mm -hmm. so that... So you mean bring them in where they're crossing over each yeah, other? Yeah, so you're not... Oh, so take this flame and make them cross yeah, instead see, of running. You see how this is here? Uh -huh. It only has red in this section. Right. Most of it's black. And over here, where this one, you know... Yeah. Well, we're not trying to be symmetrically perfect on it. No, no, I understand. But we want to make sure that you can see both the flames all at the same time. And that's the situation I have. Um, Better to have it deal. correct the way you're happy with before you start painting. And to be personal with you, I'm really not that happy with it. I'm, I think I'm going to go ahead and pull it off and redo it. And when I come back with a happy situation, I'm going to show you how to tape the rest of it off. Okay, I think I got my flames the way that I want them. Um, the way that I had them before, they were a little bit too wide. And the situation was we were covering up a lot of the red on there. So we wouldn't have seen a lot of the red. And I want to be able to see the red. So. What I did is I went ahead and retaped them and I have all the flames coming in the center. Now remember there's a seat that goes right here, so this is all you're going to see. Alright, this is all you're going to see and then of course you got your bar, uh, your strut bars that bolt right here. And then also the fender actually sits about right there like that. So what I'm going to do next is we got two choices here. We can go ahead and tape it off and, and repeat our process just like we did when we put the red ones on and then just paint the blue and stuff on it. Or we're going to do them the way that I'm going to do them because the owner requested that he wants the edges and all that a little bit brighter, which that's what we did. And if I go ahead and do it where these flames lay on top of these flames and you can see through them and all that, what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to see the definition of that flame there like you should. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fine line tape just like this and you got to be really precise. I'm going to go ahead and outline these flames because I want to make the blue flames go on top of the red flames. And to do that, you have to tape off the flame, the red flame. And you got to be very, very precise because you don't want the two overlapping. And another thing you want to be precise about is not hitting the black paint because then you'll have a black line in there and that will suck. So, yeah. Just like that. And then we got one more over here we're going to go ahead and do. And it's this big long one here. It's very hard to see. Just got to work with it. Until you get it where you want it. You want to be careful not to overlap. You got to stay right on the line. 
Um, if you go in too far, it'll have a black line in there. If you go this way too far, you're going to see a different color line. So, uh, yeah, this is a very complicated situation. And the only place that we're going to tape off the red flame is where they override the inside of the other flame. So that's very important. Now if I was going to put a lot of flames on here where they were really, really a lot, then I would uh, flip it back and forth where uh, this one went under this one and that one was on top of this one. And, you know, so forth and so forth. So it's kind of a mind game, it's kind of a jigsaw puzzle, but it's a, a worthy situation that says we're going to be able to see both flames now. So now that we got our flame set up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my paper, just like I did on the last one, and we'll go ahead and wrap our flames, pushing down on the flames where the flames are, and trying to keep the least wrinkled spot that you can. We all know this paper is going to get wrinkly on us, so that's okay, it's alright. Uh, we are working on a round surface here, and it can be a bitch. So, we're going to go like that, and we're going to go like this. Then we'll take our crayon, repeating our process, finding our lines, just like this. All right, so once that's done, I'm going to repeat my process, and I'm going to go ahead and cover this off. I'm going to do the same thing to the gas tank, and then I'm going to go ahead and paint the blue pearl on the motorcycle parts. I'm going to paint the blue pearl flames exactly like you saw the red. Once all that's done, I'm going to come back. We're going to look at them. We're going to go ahead and clear coat them and see what they look like. This is my friend Pete, your friend Pete, everybody's friend Pete, showing you how to do this, and hopefully you're learning what I'm doing. All right, uh, I told you I wasn't going to come back until after they were clear coated, but we had a situation and a fuck up on it. And my friend Pete likes to take you through every step because I know you're going to fuck it up, see? Because everybody fucks up in life. I don't give a fuck who you are. Nothing is perfect. And that's some of the problems that I run into over here at my shop is that there's some people out there in the world that want it flawlessly, mint condition, perfect, better than perfect, better than perfect. I mean, there's not even a word for what some people really want in life. But I try to do the best I can and to please the customer that comes over to my shop and I do a very good job at doing that. So what we found is an imperfection on our motorcycle tank. Let me turn it around, I'm gonna show you. If you look at the red flame right there, you can see where I burned through it. Um, sanding, you can see right there. So what I'll have to do, uh, I was wet sanding the blue flames down to get the uh, tape lines off and I sanded through the red flame. Um, that's not a big deal. It's not anything to have a heart attack over or say fuck, fuck, fuck 700 times because that's actually an easy fix and I'm going to show you how easy it is right here. So what we're going to do to fix that, we are going to actually tape this flame off and um, we're not going to tape the whole thing off. We're just going to tape part of it and I'm going to show you why. So you want to stay in between and right on the line of your flame as you tape it off and go around it. All right, you're going on the outside of the flame because we have to paint the red and you're going to go around it nice and easy just like you see me doing here and you want to stay right on the outside right on the outside edge of it and if you notice here I was using the eighth inch tape on it when I made my initial flames but now I'm actually using um, my quarter inch tape because I want to be able to have a wide line around it so I can see what the fuck's going on. And taping these, retaping these ghost flames off can be a fucking bitch. It can be a bitch and mind boggling and frustrating, but don't worry, um, it all works out in the end. You just want to make sure that your lines are still free flowing and you want to make sure the tape rides right along that edge the best possible way you can get it. Because ghost flames aren't pinstriped, so when you uh, do a ghost flame, 
Um, we're not going to pinstripe these flames, okay? Because if you pinstripe them, then when you look 10 or 15 feet away from it, you're going to see this outline pinstripe design and you're not going to see anything else. And then when you finally eventually come up to it, then you're going to see that it is uh, ghost flames. But um, the thing is, is ghost flames don't get pinstriped. So you got to really, really make sure that your lines are nice and sharp and nice and clean as you put your tape on. So once we got the little tape on it, now we can go ahead and uh, tape it off with our uh, three-quarter inch tape. Whoops, look what I'm doing here. I'm going on the wrong side. Do you see what I'm trying to say here? We're actually wanting to go on this side of it. So what I'll do is I'll take my two-inch tape. I actually went on the wrong side of it. Um, I was thinking I was taping it off, but I'm not. Because when we paint this, we're going to have to use our touch-up gun. And then we'll roll that under there so we don't get no overspray. And I'm being very careful to show you how to do this. I shouldn't have the tank tank uh, tilted like this because it can actually tip over and fall. So uh, bear with me. I don't want this tank to fall off of here. Um, I'm doing it like this on purpose to show you, the viewer, uh, how to fix these kind of fuck-ups. So, hopefully the tank won't fall over and I have to repaint the whole fucking tank and do body work to it. From showing you a lesson that you wanted to skip through. Like that. And for everybody that missed that, we're going to take one more look at it. You can see it right here where I sand it through. And then um, it has a little bit of imperfection from the frisket paper being on top of it. So that's what we're looking at. And then as I look at it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this paper up. Because I don't think that we went far enough on that flame. Okay, I don't think we went far enough. I'm going to have to bring it out a little bit more to really blend it in properly. So we'll loosen this paper off and we're going to roll it to right there. You see how far I'm going now? Then we'll go ahead and tape all this down just like this. And I'll roll it around to make a nice soft edge just like that, all right? And then I think we're ready to go ahead and blend this all in. All right, so now that we got it taped off, we got our nice soft edges here, because I'm just gonna blend this in. What I'm using is my little touch-up gun here. And I got the pattern open pretty wide. I'm gonna close it just a little bit. So it's right in the middle. And then I'll control my volume with my trigger. Now the air pressure is very low, I'd say about 18, 22 pounds. And all we're gonna do is, you can watch real close here. That's it, right there. Do you see how I painted that and now it's black? And now what I'll do is I'll mix up some pearl and then I'll blend that pearl into the flame. Now this is where it can get a little bit tricky because you have to use the same gun to put the pearl on that you used when you did your flames because if you don't, uh, the pattern won't look proper and the, uh, the, the uh, uh, what can I say, volume that you put on there won't be the same. So we're going to have to go ahead and use this spray gun because this is the one I used. I'm going to turn my pressure way down. I got my uh, pattern to a uh, straight line instead of an open wide pattern and then I also went ahead and on this particular job I screwed my volume in so very little comes out. Always remember to keep your pearl mix stirred up as you're using it. And then you can see it coming out right there. So we're going to stand right here and you can see how far I'm away from it. Okay, And we're going to start spraying our pearl on. And we're just going to blend it in just like that. And then now our flame is fixed and it's going to match the rest of the motorcycle. And then once I let that dry for approximately five minutes, what I'll do is I'll take this spray gun. I have some intercoat binder in here, blender, I'm sorry, not binder, the DBC 500 that I've been using. And I want to make sure that I coat that because that's just raw pearl with reducer. 
So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to turn my pressure up just a little bit. I'm going to open my fan up. And then we're going to go ahead and spray a nice coat, blending it in to the uh, existing flame. And that's basically it right there. So we'll be back after we clear coat it, color sand and buff it, and take a final look at it. I'm going to go ahead and apply three full wet coats of clear on that. We'll let them sit for a couple days or overnight at least. Then we'll buff it out and it's going to be awesome. We'll be back on our custom how to paint ghost flames and the easy simple way that is. And if you fuck it up, we just learned how to fix it. We'll see you later. for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.